delivery models such as where all the evolutions. The programme is currently uh, being refreshed in light of the new world plan and the strategies to deliver this going forward, as well as proposals to establish a five-year budget strategy. I Thank you, Councillor Brown. Is there any other questions to Councillor Brown? Well, can we note that in court? Okay, moving on to Cabinet Portfolio for Housing and Communities, are there any questions to Councillor George Davis? No questions to Councillor George Davis. So, can we note that in court? Thank you. Moving on to Cabinet Portfolio Business and Tourism. Are there any questions to Council Pascati? Council Lindy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On the part two of the report, Council Pascati, we talk about increased women investments and we talk about the November Cabinet Group to create new investment for women in the world for the world's events. But uh, that's just a question with the Council in July. What is the update on the International Trade Centre? At that point, he told me to. The announcement will be in place in a few weeks, and yet we've had nothing since. Could you update us on the international trade test, please? <laughs> well, I'm happy to give it. It's in the I'm not concentrating on one aspect. 
aspect of it, whether it be Hamilton Square, the beer presence, or, 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 or Neptune's or Neptune's plans. The consultation, as I say, should be started, we hope, sometime in February. And as part of that, yeah, it will be on the of course, as has been said, Premier. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, can we note that before? Okay, moving on to finance, asset, technology, and any questions to Councillor Adrian Jones. Councillor Blakey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, can I thank Councillor Jones for this one way to response, which is in his portfolio summary regarding the, uh, the, the limitations on remote working with regard to accessing council emails through captive portals. Uh, and while I, while I accept the, the difficulties that are there, has he spoken to colleagues in Liverpool, St. Helens, Sefton, Henry, etc., who don't seem to have these problems? It seems to be something. That we will be guarded about taking, not taking risk. Other local authorities appear to allow their members access. Uh, so that, that's a question I've been asking to, to look into that. And the other, the other point just to raise is this is a way of the antics today, it caused disruption to the whole of the council websites and further disruption to members' email who uh, still couldn't get off and when they made the phone call found that a server had not been booted off on the old servers. Councillor Garubia to ask his question now. Um, Cabinet Member's report states that the new council website continues to perform well and is an improved methods for residents. Uh, could you just confirm exactly how performance is being monitored? Feedback that the public are getting, how that's been captured. Councillor Jones. Thank you for both of the questions. And thank you also to um, Professor Montego for his courtesy in waiting. But it was um, uh, a question which I felt deserved um, a, a pretty um, thorough answer. And so I delayed this uh, personal request and also provide a more detail for full council. I'm sure you approve of that, this. And I thank you for your, um, your patience in that respect. So what, what I would add to it is that we know that all those companies We also know that some other authorities have in fact had many, many penalties against them. I believe Manchester had a particularly substantial uh, penalty, and so also did one of the health authorities. And the, quite apart from the fact that a heavy penalty like that would cost us a lot of money in having to pay it, I've got rather more concern as well for the residents of Will, who is very well with information to protect it. But Chris, I do share with you the same um, frustration. Because when I work for a different organisation, I've been in the for some years, I can pick up my emails anywhere. I don't think my colleagues working for that trade union can now do it in the way that we do it for the same reasons of sensitivity. But I would just add one little thing as I may about this. Um, members will be aware of a um, recent publicity when a major player in the technology field, TalkTalk, was hacked into by a teenager from Northern Ireland. We'll also all of us be aware, especially if we like a point, Customers of um, weather sports also had difficulty of that sort. But the particular one I want to draw attention to, and I'm going to give the website reference afterwards, is that just as an example, a cyber security company recently conducted a case study experiment where a smart seven year old child managed to hack into a computer using tools that the child found without adult help and downloaded from the internet. It took the seven year old just under 11 minutes to download the software, set up a dummy Wi Fi hotspot, and steal information from a volunteer victim, obviously, the thing was happening, who connected the computer to the hotspot, and more information about that experiment is available from the Information Age website, Information Age. But so anyone can go and research that and find it is true. If a seven year old kid can get this stuff, uh, it's obvious that we really do have to protect the people who will accept that. Sympathise with the frustration I feel as well. I'm not yet on that. It was not quite what happened this morning today with the, uh, uh, the, the, the server, but he called me up and got to tell the Christian was in as well, so that wasn't the inconvenience. Councillor Karuba, Karuba, sorry. Uh, you have a perfectly good question, but it was, it's going to take about three months before we have a full picture of how, how the new website is performing. 
the following initial measurements are encouraging. I, I understand that we have a 9.6 fall in bounce rate in November, and that means measuring the number of visits where people come straight in and out of the site without looking at another page. And for most uh, pages, this is an indication that people have been unable to find what they need. In November of this year, the bounce rate was 9.6 lower than in the six months previously, uh, before the new website went up. So that looks as though we will be in the right direction. Um, people look in at more content in less time, which is a very, very important point. And in November of this year, people looked at 8% more pages in 13% less time compared to the six months April and September. I think this shows that people are moving through the website more quickly since the site was relaunched. Um, and we have a facility, of course, for people to provide uh, feedback on the page on the website. Yes, the question is very good, and I hope you're satisfied with uh, 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 that. Technical view, and I'll do the very best of it. No, that's very good. Thank you, Councillor Jones. Can we note that report? <laughs> okay, moving on to Captain Portfolio for Adam Kerr. Any questions to uh, Councillor Chris Jones? <coughs> No, no questions to Councillor Christian. Can we know that before? Moving on to Cabinet Portfolio for Environmental Protection. Any questions to Councillor Bernie Moody? Okay. Right. I turned over to you. I certainly have. Moving on to Cabinet Portfolio for Leisure and Culture. Are there any questions to Councillor Chris Mead?
a lot of research done that we, we know exactly the areas where people are put that place in the patch hall. There's places in, in, in the likes of Heswell and West Cave now where people are recycling 65%. So we're going, that's the problem we've got. We've got 65% down to zilch. Um, and there's going to be a lot of things like knock on people's doors to let them know what they can and what they can't recycle. Um, uh, there's going to be a lot of teams working on the ground. There's going to be a lot of publicity. There's going to be on things on buses. Um, everything that we can do, all the stops we can pull out to get people to recycle. But it's going to be a massive behavioural change for some people. But if we're going to reach them target, the aim first of all is to get back to 42%. But by 2020, we have got to find a way of recycling 50%.
engage with people as much as possible. And I'm sure we've got some very good officers who are working um, night and day to ensure that we do get a good outcome. But on the, uh, thanks very much for those, those words. Uh, it's about to be uh, about to uh, work with you in front of your children and stuff. Um, we, we, we are looking, we have been looking at, at transport for, for, for the most vulnerable children. We're, all, we're doing assessments all the time. Um, I can assure you that uh, we look at individual needs of children to ensure that, uh, that, that if, if it's at all possible, the children can use other means of transport other than um, the, the, the uh, taxis and that. But we, we do look at them on an individual basis. Um, and the, certainly the officers and myself have their cognizance all the time of representations that people make and we do have uh, assessments done on a regular basis. So yeah, I can assure you that we do look, but we do have to make savings in some of those areas. That's the reality. We've got to make 20 million savings this year. Um, and you know, at the end of the day, uh, we are trying to protect the statutory services, the mandatory services, discretionary services that in the past where the local authority have actually managed to keep those going, but they are going to prove extremely difficult in the, in, in, in the future. And I think lots of local authorities have already done away with these discretionary services, whether it's transport to schools or whatever. We are we're trying to maintain the strongest we can and also to ensure that the most vulnerable children who travel to our of our special school, have that the very close possible. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Councillor Smith. Can we note that report? Yeah. Moving on to Cabinet Portfolio for Transport, Technology, Strategy and Infrastructure. Are there any questions to Councillor Stewart? Really? Councillor Kenny. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can I ask the Cabinet member whether he's had any feedback yet? Where LED lighting units have already been installed, what feedback have any has he had from residents? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's the what? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Whilst I welcome progress with the migration of world street lighting to a more energy efficient and longer lasting LED system, I have personally reported almost 100 existing lamps requiring attention since the clocks changed six weeks ago using the Council's online system which appears to regard the job as done once it has been referred to the contractor. This is clearly not the case. So will the cabinet member undertake to investigate how many requests for service are now outstanding and indicate how and by when the obvious backlog will be eliminated so that members and their residents are not left in the dark? <laughs> Thank you. 
single back to all CLIs. And so, so I think that's a really good program. And uh, obviously, we've got some people in March. And obviously, you know, the, 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 the our fonts. And um, the third street lights down for you know, the upgrade for the next uh, month or so. Obviously, we're going to need that to have to that to prioritize. And Alan, in terms of your custom car parts, uh, the answer is last year we reduced car parts, so it's across the board, which has been successful. And we've been uh, over 200,000 pounds more income than we were expecting, so I'm um, grateful for the interest. Thank you, Councillor Olivier. Can we have that big course? Okay, moving on to policy performance committees, chairs, reports. Are there any questions for the chairs of the policy performance committees? No, can we note that report? Thank you. Okay, moving on to item seven, matters requiring approval by the council. The councils we now turn to item seven on page 71 to 240 of the agenda, which includes recommendations from Cabinet the 5th of November 2015, Licensing Act 2003 Committee, 28th of October 2015. Standards and Constitutional Oversight Committee, 23rd of November 2015. Transformation and Resources Policy and Performance Committee, 3rd of December 2015. Firstly, item A on page 71 of the agenda. 7A Cabinet, the 5th of November 2015. I now invite Councillor Phil Davis to move the recommendations to approve the revised capital programme of 50.2 million. So good, Mr. Mayor. Is there a second? Okay. All those in favour of the recommendation in respect of the revised capital programme, please clearly indicate. Is there a second to that? Second. All those in favour to approve the 
wide scheme of delegation objections to highways proposals. Any against? Abstentions? I'm going to ask the Board of Solicitors to explain this one because it's a little bit complicated and I want to make sure that it's explained fully. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the, there are three amendments that I've been proposed in relation to this particular item. Given that the subject matter is similar in nature, um, the Council of the Community will be able to take all three amendments together and debate them as one single debate uh, and each vote taken in turn in relation to each amendment. Thank you, sir. Item 7F on the agenda. I again call upon Councillor Bill Davis to move the recommendation following the Standards and Constitutional Oversight Committee held on the 23rd of November 2015 to approve the proposal changes to the Council's Constitution, pages 197 to 230 of the agenda, on your supplementary agenda papers, pages 3 and 4. Is there a second? That's it. Notice has been given of three amendments to this item are set out on page five of the agenda supplement. Is everybody happy to do that? That's super. Can I have a proposal? Sorry, sorry, the first first amendment. Um, all those in favour? Can I have a the second or the first amendment? Second. On the second amendment, can I have a proposal in the second? First amendment. And the third amendment. Proposal, Mr. Mayor. First Amendment, all those in favour? All those against? Sessions. One. Uh, that's clearly lost. Uh, on the third amendment, can I have those <coughs> again? Uh, sorry, those four.
abstentions? That's uh, Kelly. Notice has been 
we even have an amendment to this item set out on page 19 of the agenda supplement. Councillor Chris, Chris Blakely, you now have seven minutes to move the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sorry, sorry, Chris. Can you show uh, a move in the second and first minutes? I second it, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I'm disappointed that I have to bring this objection to you again. But all my original solution was trying to achieve was to protect the world's precious green belt alongside the safe and efficient running of this fire and rescue service, providing service to 26,000 residents in West Wales. Mr. Mayor, the regeneration of the policy of the Morris Committee on the second, the Labour Group and Senate responding to the waiting of no solution. Chose it to ignore the safety of those people in order to make a political game by trying to conserve the government of the fire station. Mr. Mayor, it was interesting that the meeting with another Labour member who chose to ask the Chief Fire Officer a faculty to the council on the site that is not in Green Belt, there's only 600 metres away from the site in question. Despite me making aware of the site when I spoke to the committee in September at the original meeting. There was one moment during the meeting in December, I'm sorry, Councillor Muspat to come home to Paulie, when I thought that Councillor Muspat was on site when she said she was all for protecting the Green Belt and the ward she represented, as well as the ward she lived in. Sadly, Mr. Mayor, that was only a fleeting moment as Councillor Muspat's concerns about Green Belt appeared to them that they the boundaries of those two wards. Mr. Mayor, Minister of the Rescue Service do a tremendous job. In protecting the residents of Will and the Murphy side by working both proactively and reactively. And I'm sure we all want to see that service delivered as efficiently as possible despite the difficult times we're in. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, this has never been about the need for a fire station in this locality, it's simply about location. Should it be a new one or should the existing one to fire station be developed? And our group want to do all we can assisting this of our rescue service and achieving the goals. That's why we're asking officers to work with this of our rescue service in identifying a suitable site that is not in green belt. Mr. Mayor, Widow's planners have already indicated in their pre-application response to the fire authority that the green belt site in Silver Massey is unlikely to get planning permission because in their words, in the light of your fallback scenario, if we're able to redevelop the fire station often, Within the urban area, and with no impact on green belts, very special circumstances will not exist, in which case planning permission is not likely to be granted. Mr. Mayor, given that the fire authority really wanted the fire station as near to the midpoint of up to the rescue as possible, in the alternative site, which is not green belt, which is 600 metres away, which incidentally was based on the fire rescue service.